Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we are going to do our final installment of our three-part series on the My Monthly Hero Kit for July 2018. And in this one we're going to make three cards plus a bonus card. So for card number one, we're going to start by stamping inside our card form. Enjoy the ride in the Danu Blue. And this is on a blue polka dot card form. And I'm also going to stamp three hot air balloons that came with the kit. And I'm going to be doing those in my Art Ranger Archival ink in the black. That way when I color them with my Arteza markers, we have a vibrant black outline that will not smear. If you have water-based pens that you're going to use using archival ink, and even the Memento ink will save it from bleeding. So always use the proper inks for whatever you're doing. So I'm going to do this in a bright primary color set with green, red, blue, orange, and yellow as the stripes. So I'm going to color these in show you the first color and then I'm going to speed this up as we color these in. I wanted to make a fun bright colorful balloon card because these little hot air balloons are just so beautiful and most hot air balloons are very brightly colored. Alright, so I do some yellow, orange, see that fun rainbow color. I didn't realize I was trying to do it in the pattern and I totally messed up the pattern, but that's alright. It won't really matter too much. As long as I got those beautiful bright colors to color them, nobody will notice. So now that I am done coloring that, I'm going to color the little baskets. Already, and we're going to die cut those out with a corresponding die that came with the kit. And for my panel, I am going to do a technique almost similar to what we had done in the last video. I am going to take the beautiful reactive ink that came with this kit and I am going to blend it out on this card form, card form, card panel. And I'm going to make a beautiful sky with it. This color was absolutely gorgeous. And it was very, some people said theirs was lighter, but mine was extremely juicy. So I don't know if I got lucky, juicy one, but I did. And I'm going to spray that down with my glitter spray. And get some spots on there. And then dab it down with a dry cloth. And you get those beautiful, almost watermark sprays. And I'm going to now heat set this. That way it dries real fast since I don't have time to sit there and wait for it to dry. And I also did cut out some clouds in the last video also with the little playing card we made. And this time, instead of doing what I did the first time, which is I I 3D affected all the clouds. I'm going to do a mixture of both because I want to add dimension to this. Of course, in the other one, I also did a lift technique with water on it, so we had background clouds. This one we don't so much. So I'm going to hear this to my card form since we are ready to do the 3D effects on there. And I just love this on that fun polka dot card form, it just makes it pop more. So I'm going to start with the ones that I'm going to just put right on and just add some of my, my adhesive roller to it. And do a few couple more clouds and then we'll do the rest with a pop-up effect.
Oh, that's a nice little foam tape. Some scotch adhesive squares on there. There's card number, cloud number one done. All right, so we're getting a little closer to these skinny clouds take thinner strips. And these clouds are actually from the June kit. They had some beautiful cloud dyes, and I took advantage of it. And I did the same thing in, this, in the same color I did the last card. I used a white pearl paper just to make sure that I got this beautiful shimmer to it. So now I'm going to stick these clouds on there. Small one up there, and I think I'm going to do a little swap through what I was going to do originally. That cloud there. And I think I'm going to put this one down below. Kind of overlap them a little bit. There we go. And now to pop up our hot air balloons. So I'm taking some little squares and putting them on the back of them. I don't need as much because they're not as big of an image. And we're going to just randomly put them in the card. And the reason I decided to move the second bear cloud up a little more was because I realized I needed to leave room for the sentiment. So we're going to get those little balloons on first, and then we're going to work on our sentiment for the front. And I'm staggering the little balloons like they would be flying in the sky. So now I'm going to get out my Stamp Perfect, and I have a piece of black cardstock. And I took this from the March kit. We did talk about that in the last one also. That sometimes you can intermix your kits, and it gives you a great effect. So don't be afraid to intermix. Have fun with it. You don't have to use the kits together. I always split them up. Like I showed you in my stamp book, I have all my sentiments by what they are, and I just go through and I pick what I need. All right, so I heat set that in Recollections White Snow Embossing Powder. And I fished, well, I didn't fish tail, I slashed it, and I put some foam adhesive behind that also. And there we go. That's that card. And you see the little shimmer from the shimmer spray that I put on there. All right, the next card is going to be a fun effect. We are going to be doing a paneling effect. And you see the frame, and you're thinking, well, why is she leaving the blue frame there? This is going to be my guide for my rays. And I'm going to 3D mount my rays so that they're raised. So this process is a little tedious because you have to add your foam adhesive to each little ray and make them 3D. But when you're done, you get a cool 3D ray effect. So I'm doing this with some leftover scraps I had from cutting on the first video of the white, red, and blue. Like I said, we will use these pieces again. That's why I saved them. And I was going to do this in a pattern, but I realized I didn't have the pattern correct. So we are just going to randomly put some red, white, and blue 
sprays and not worry about a particular pattern, though I did start out that way. And I'm gonna speed this up because this, te this task can be a little tedious and take a little long. And for the sake of our video and of our watching time, we don't need to watch it in full detail. So I'm, like I said, putting foam adhesive on the back and I'm using my Scotch squares and I'm just cutting them to size what I need and then laying them in the frame. Do each ray here. Like you see, I was doing a blue, red, white pattern and then I realized I didn't have enough of the colors to do it. So I ended up alternating it a little bit, but it doesn't really affect it any. But I am using this frame as a guide to where to stick my ray. And I just temporarily tacked it with some washi tape so that way when I'm done, I can pull it off and not affect what I had done for a design. And I'm leaving the sides open so that it does not stick to the frame. So that way my rays are raised so when I do pull it off, it'll be easy. Well, easy-ish. This is the moment where I realized there's just no good way of doing this. So we're just gonna do what we need to do. And just fill in the spots we need to fill. This would be a fun, a fun effect with a rainbow card with rays coming from a sun, all kinds of fun things. This, I think this, out of the dies that I've gotten from them for a frame die, I think this is one of my favorites because it is very versatile. You can use it as a fun ray effect for a card, you can use it for a sunshine. I mean, the amount of things you can do with this is endless. It's a kind of a nice frame, versatile frame that you can use over and over again. I'm so happy to have it in my collection because it is very fun and versatile. So we're getting almost done our rays here. We're getting close to the end. Very fun effect here. And now that we've finished it off, we're gonna now take off the frame. And like I said, you just pull it out from underneath there. And ta-da, you have a beautiful raised ray card. Now for the center of this card, I decided I was going to uh, cut out another roller coaster. But first I'm gonna adhere this to a midnight blue card form. I'm trying to line that up. I did find it was a little small for a typical A6 card form, but it's not too bad. If you line it up just correctly, it balances out. And like I said, I'm going to die cut out this roller coaster one more time. So I'm going to do this in the Paris Dusk. Oh no, I chose the Danube blue. I wanted to keep it in the same bright blue family as the rays. 
and I'm also going to clear coat it with some clear embossing powder from Recollections. That way, it gives it some shine. And I'm going to pop this up with some more Scotch adhesive squares because I want to have the same 3D effect as I do in the rays. All right, so I think I got them all on there that I need, so we're going to adhere that to that. And for the sentiments, I am choosing I believe I chose the hello that came in the kit. And I put the little stars on the bottom of it, and I die cut it out so that it fits across the panel of this card. But I love the black and white with some color backgrounds because it really makes it pop. So I'm putting some foam squares on that also, and I'm going to adhere that right above the rays. Very fun patriotic card almost. And to embellish it, I'm going to end up using, uh, doing a little different. I have first embellished it with my red and blue rhinestones. But I noticed that they kind of washed out with the black. So I'm pulling out some of my red, white, and blue patriotic stripe enamel dots that are also available on the site. And I do have them in two sizes right now. I have them in a, I believe, a five inch. A uh, six cent, um, six millimeter and an eight millimeter, and I'm hoping to get some more smaller ones. But I'm going to show you. See how it just washed out. You just could not see that rhinestone on there. So I decided those would be better on the rays. So I started out with the enamel dots there just to give it some pop on the words, and now I'm just going to stick them randomly over the rays. And that way I give it some of that sparkle on the rays, but then I also don't wash out like I did on the black. Those red, white, and black red, white, and blue, excuse me, enamel dots actually produce a better effect on that. So I'm gonna just lay these out randomly on these rays and try to correspond the colors so they don't blend in. Putting the red on the blue and of course, whatever color on the white and the blue on the red. That way it doesn't meld in too much and it also gives kind of a contrast in color to it. I thought this was a fun way to use these rhinestones. These are also available on my site. So I'm not sure about the quantities of the blue that are left. There we go. And there's those fun effects on that. And I did leave it blank inside the card. Now for the next card, I am going to be making a shaker card. So I'm going to be centering my panel. That way I know where to cut my tickets because I'm going to put a line of three tickets on this panel. So I'm just centering it between the two of them. Really straight edge, just to make sure that we are accurate. And I'm going to die cut them in this little channel. And I'm going to save the little tickets I left out because I'm going to actually use those for a 3D effect on the top of the card. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp on this panel some more of the tickets in all three of the inks that came with the kit, starting with the blue reactive. I'm just going to randomly stick them around the window. And I did goof up on this one, so I'm going to do another quick stamp. I don't think it's going to line up, but that'll be fine. And now I'm going to clean my stamp and I'm going to do the red next.
I have to say these reactive inks, usually I don't like stamping with Hero Arts inks. They tend to be a little too, too juicy, but these inks are actually really nice. They stamped really well. And now I'm going to come in with the unicorn white that came with the kit and give it a little contrast with some white pigment ink. So I'm going to go over that one I goofed up on. That way it kind of covers it up a little bit. I think I'll be covering it up also with one of the tickets that I'm going to add the 3D effect with. There we go, I think we're getting there. One more maybe. There we go. So I'm going to heat set this quickly only because pigment ink does take a while to ink. And this will give it a little head start while I'm doing the rest of the card. So we'll heat that up and then let it dry naturally for the rest of it. Now for these little tickets, I'm going to stamp on there the little ticket. I'm going to try to line this up with the block as much as I can. Usually you cut them out after you stamp them. But for this case, I already had them stamped, so I didn't want to mess them up too much. But they are not a key focal point, so I'm not too concerned if they're totally straight. They're just for a little added extra. All right, so let me move those out of the way. And I'm going to put my sentiment inside. I am going to be doing the come one come all and try to line that up there we go and I'm going to be doing that in the rhubarb stock and I believe I use the Paris dusk for the blue to try to stay in the same color family now my frame is mostly dry so I'm going to get my acetate ready and I'm going to put some adhesive down to stick that down. And there we go. And now to build my shaker frames, I'm going to be using my Tombow adhesive foam tape. It's a very, it's a very thick and very sticky tape, and I love it for th these kind of cards. In fact, I literally have to wash my scissors after using it because the adhesive sticks so well to my scissors. So I'm just going to frame these little windows so that I have three little window boxes made on this card. So I'm gonna just frame in there, tuck it in and frame it. So I want each box to have their own little sequence. And there we go. Now I'm going to take some thin strips of that and just frame the sides of it. So I'm going to cut myself a strip and I'll be able to do both sides with one piece. I'm going to cut it just a tad bit thinner. And then I'm going to cut them in half. That way they're easier to stick. Because like I said, this is super sticky. I just can't cut down the full amount without it sticking on my scissors. That's one thing I gotta say about this adhesive. It's very sticky. But it's got a great thickness to it so that you get a nice effect. I'm also gonna stick some little tiny pieces of it in those little nooks. That way I have an even distribution. That way my car doesn't cave in. So I got some blue metallic sequins as well as some of my little metallic foil stars and I'm going to add some red white and gold inside these little windows as well as the blue try to spread it out a little evenly
pinch it there, pinch there, oops. Now I'm going to remove the out layer of my adhesive tape. I really should have done this before I stuck the sequins in, in a way, because some of them did bounce onto it, and I did have to remove them, but that's fine. Either way works. Sometimes it's a little easier to do it before. Sometimes it's easier to take it off after. I'm just going to pull off this backing. Expose the double sided foam. It's a bad thing is when you use more pieces, you have more tape to pull back. But to make these windows the way I needed them, I needed to. Okay, got all of it. There it goes. Two more. Oh, and like I said, <laughs> they bounced a little, but that's alright. We can just pull them off quickly and get them ready. Alright, so now I put it on my card form, and I did a horrible job sticking it. So I'm going to e kind of fix this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little ticket and kind of stick it there. Do the same with the blue ticket, which I'm going to actually remove in a little bit. And then the same with the little red ticket to give it that 3D effect. I noticed that when I put it on there, I had too much space on the top. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to, as you see, there's the shaker fat. I'm going to cut off the top of that card a little bit and reapply my sticker. And there, that way it's a little more even and not as off center. But there we go, isn't that a fun card? Now for our last card, we're going to make use of that wonderful little postcards we got in there. I was trying to figure out a way to use this postcard and make a fun card with it. I just was hitting problems with it. So finally I came up with an idea. Not that this is going to be something you can just send postcard-wise through the mail, but it is a great little thing to put in for an invitation, or even just for a fun card with a postcard effect. And I think this one would most definitely probably be a envelope postcard because of the effects we're going to do on it. But it's a fun way to use these also. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that little card form, that little uh, a chipboard postcard that we got. I'm putting some of the reactive blue on it and then water. I'm going to speckle it with some water. And what I'm going to do, I was seeing where I wanted to put my play, make sure I got enough blue there, and I did. So I'm going to spray it down with some water and tap it off just to give some water spots. And I cut out this little frame that came in there. And I'm not too concerned about the top ends of it because I'm going to snip those off. But I'm going to be putting in a kind of a shaker effect to this postcard. So we're going to be taking our acetate and cutting it to the size of our postcard. And as you see, there it is. And these are going to be my little frame that's going to go around it. And I cut them the width of my foam adhesive, which is going to be that Tombow foam tape that I used in the previous card. So I cut off the top end so that they're even. And I also am going to stamp this little plane again. Sorry, it's off screen. I apparently didn't see that I was off screen. I think I was just so excited. I found a way to use my postcard that I didn't realize how I was stamping this. But I am doing this in the rhubarb stock, the little plane. You can sort of see me off on screen there a little bit. And I'm going to stamp it a couple times. And this is in that moment of ink. It should be fade resistant and water resistant. So hopefully this wouldn't be an effect even if you did send it through the mail.
and I'm doing the little sentiment, the, I think it was a hello there, in the Paris dusk. And I'm going to cut that out with my die. Isn't that sweet? And I also put some beautiful, more beautiful die cut clouds from the June Cat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these little frame pieces onto the acetate. And then I'm going to frame the rest of it with clouds so that that will camouflage my foam tape also. So I'm almost making myself a little window card. Lay these out with a little bit of adhesive from my roller. I got the bottom layer down. I'm going to do the top layer. And there we go. And I am going to end up cutting off some of the top overhang I have of those clouds. So I'm going to adhere that little plane on there also. And now I'm going to add my foam tape. Measure this out and get my first strip on there. And then I'm going to do my last strips on the bottom and the top. And I'm making myself a little framed spot. But it's a great way to make use of these postcards in a fun and different way. I didn't want to do the same postcard like everybody else was doing. I just wanted something different. Something that wasn't like the others. Thus, this is our bonus card. <laughs> bonus postcard. So, now that I got the frame, I'm going to add some more of First, I'm going to, like I didn't do in the first time, I'm going to take off my tape first and then add my stars. And I'm adding the gold and the blue stars in there. And then I'm going to line up my postcard as well as I can without making it crooked. And there we go. Now, like I said, I'm going to end up cutting off some of those clouds. So I'm going to get my big scissors instead of my little scissors so I can get a smoother cut. Okay, so now just cutting off those edges with my big scissors. There we go. Almost done. All right. And there you go. There's our little shaker postcard. Like I said, I don't think you could mail it like this, but it may be okay in the envelope. But I think it's just fun way to use them. All right, so if you like this video, please check out our last uploaded video as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we invite you to click here to subscribe, like, and ring for notifications. And make sure to also subscribe for our newsletter for crafty sales as well as video updates.